Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. This morning, I'm gonna set up a solar electric fence. We have the unit set up already, which isn't much of anything. It just sits on a T-post. I'm sure you can hang it from a wood post or a tree or pretty much anything, but let's take a look. Yeah, they got a slot right here so that you can hang it from like a single screw or something onto a tree. So this part is really easy. You just set it up somewhere where it's going to get sun. Just looking to see if this is the same as the other one. And it's not. It's just got an on off under here. Our other one, I believe it has the terminals on the bottom, but these are on the top. So these things are really simple to set up. All you have to do is hook up a ground and then go from this terminal over to your string. In this case, this is a braided nylon rope with aluminum braided into it. And this stuff will knock you on your butt if you touch it. The hardest part about this is actually driving the ground rods and possibly making a slit in the earth to bury the wires. All I got to do is, is bury the wire going across here so that you don't trip on it. It doesn't need to be buried. If I were to put this unit on top of this post right here, that would work as well, but the horses will mess with it, so we put it separate. So, what I got to do now, I have all my stuff set up in the gator. I was just coming up here to see if my extension cord was going to make it from the barn over to where I got to drive the rods. And I don't think it will, so I'm going to pull two extension cords. And I think that should do it. I'll put one right here, right next to it, and then you got to put the other one about 10 feet away in our ground here on top of the ridge like this it's really hard to drive a ground rod because there's just boulders and rocks and stuff all over under the ground so hopefully i don't hit anything or if i hit anything it'll push it out of the way but we'll see so let's get a cord over here to get some power if i didn't have electricity right there at the barn well, we actually could have extended this fence all the way over to the barn, too. We could have enclosed this area, but we didn't want to. And we could have just used the electricity at the barn to power the fence. But we decided to go this way, and if this were too far away, I would have to use the generator to power the rods into the ground because you really don't want to do it by hand. You may be able to pound the ground rods into the ground by hand, but... I really don't think so. Maybe after a really hard rain or something, but you would have to have really soft soil to pound something that far into the ground. So I'll show you the equipment over at the gator and we'll get power here and get going on this. Okay, I just flipped the electrical cord that was powering the greenhouse. Flipped it the other way. It's a big heavy cord and it's not quite long enough. I believe it's a 50 footer, but I have another one right here. So that should do it. They're both 12 gauge, so it should be just fine. Two rods, two rod connectors or rod clamps, some wire to connect the rods to each other and to the power unit. And hopefully this is this was just spare from something else. So hopefully it's enough to do the whole job, but I have plenty more wire. And my rotary hammer, and I have the tip for driving ground rods in there. So I believe that's all I need. So let's get up there and pound these in. Got all my stuff up here. I went and got some sandpaper because you have to sand the copper if it's starting to get oxidized like that. Well, you have to sand it either way. Um, so you got a good connection. What else did I pick up? Ah, I'll figure it out. So, okay, this is the tool I'm gonna use. 
it is a rotary hammer. I think they call it a combination hammer, but it is a 1 and 9 sixteenths rotary hammer D2, D25-01 by DeWalt. Uh, what is it? SD, SDK? I don't know. The It's harder to find the bits for it. It's the newer one. You can see by the end it has this slot here and then it has two slots on the sides and two slots on the top. Um, I think it's SDK. Oh, this is uh, SDK Max, I believe. So let me get this set up and you could see there's stumps around here. There was a good amount of trees in this area and I don't want to hit any roots either. I have to drive the first one near the post. I don't want to run a wire all the way over to it. I'd like to run the wire down and right to it. And then the other one has to be about 10 feet away. So, uh, I mean, I could go back into there, but I don't know what I'm going to run into that way. So I think I'm going to make it easy on myself and run it this way. But that means I have to trench this entire way. Well, either way, I have to trench for the wire that connects them. So it's not going to be a super easy task, but we'll get her done. got to dig a little bit of a hole so that the uh, end of the rod is buried underground. So my next one needs to be oh, around 10 feet away, maybe a little more. So I'll take this other ground rod, which is 8 feet. And 10 feet is right about where these cords connect. So eh, I don't even need to do that. Just get the shovel and take my scoop out right there. Then I got to make a little trench between the two and connect some wires. I'm just going to cut off that part that's sticking out of the ground. I could put it in the middle and just pound that one as well, and maybe I will, but that'll take another clamp. I'm not sure if I have another clamp or not. We'll see. But we're about right here. All right, I think I'm going to go at a shallower angle on this one. But sooner or later, we're going to hit the top of the mountain. We are at the top of the ridge. And, I mean, just right over there, it's solid rock about three feet down. And at, even at the angle that I put that, it, it'll hit the top of that and start bending and go along the top. So... I should do this one at a much steeper angle. Maybe I won't have to cut any off. All right, let's get it done.
If you don't have a rotary hammer, just call up the nearest local rental place and they'll have one. Just make sure you put the setting to hammer and not hammer and drill. Uh, there's no need for it to rotate. You just want to pound this in. Now I need to clean off the ends. This one I have to cut first, so I have to go get the sawzall for that. So I need to clean off the ends, get the clamps on, yada, yada, yada. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, I don't know what I was thinking about with this. It, it would have worked for a little while, but I want to do a more permanent solution. So I have ground wire and outdoor wire. The only difference between this and regular wire is that it's a heavier coating on it and it's UV protected. So this will run up and down the control unit and it'll go across underground and then come up to that bottom wire. You don't want to electrify both wires because if they stick their head in between it, they'll get shocked and then they'll go up and they'll just keep getting shocked and it could cause all kinds of havoc. So you just electrify one, the lower one. Okay, so I got my rods cleaned and as you've seen, I put in the third one. Now, I just got to get this wire connected to that first one, and then I'll loop it through and connect it to that one, and then end the ground right there, connect it to the UV wire, up to there, and then back down from there, over to there. Okay, now I know what's going on. I had this all set up kind of kitted with this wire and I used the ground wire from, I was going to use that for grounding the shed, but this was for something else. I saw this in there and I said, well, this is the right wire to use, but this is three wire. I'm running two circuits from the shed to the shelter over there. And that's what this is for. And this is expensive. For this, I probably need, oh, 10, 12 feet. Oh no, just a 10 foot chunk of 14 gauge because I can wrap the two wires together. Or actually there's three wires in there. So I could use a thinner wire than that, but I don't think they even sell it. So I'm just gonna use this like I originally planned and when I get some UV wire, I'll swap it out. It won't be very hard. So I'm going to continue with this. All right, strip this out. Nice long strip. Does not matter if it is touching the ground because we actually want that. this down and I'm gonna have to bend this oh my God. no I don't have to bend it just got to get it on there
show you these connections before I put that back in the hole. This one goes in the ground, goes up to the positive, goes down, goes over these, through the ground and up to the fence. This other one, the ground, the clamp is right here and the bare wire from the ground rods over that way comes through the clamp right here and this wire is on top of it so they're both clamped together and then it goes up and is under the green one. I don't have a tester with me but it's going to work so I should just turn it on and we should get a little indicator light. Yep. You can see the indicator light flashing red. That's the pulses going through the wire. I'm going to have to get in here and trim. The grass is getting close to the top wire, at least down that way more. And you don't want that because it will short it. So this is all going to work just fine. I have no intention of touching that wire because it will really, really, really hurt. I wouldn't say hurt really, it just, I don't know, it's a jolt. All right, and the very, very last thing to do is to water the grass. That'll help the grass make a comeback from getting sliced like that. You don't need to because it's not much damage to the grass at all, but it's still a good idea and once this is softened up a bit I'll come back a little bit later and step it in again you can see still a little bit open and you never be able to tell that there's a ground rod here or wires going across this same method works great for uh, putting in gates as well when you have to cross a big metal gate or something. And I will be showing that later on this summer. So if you want to see more of this stuff, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you give the video a like and or share it, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.